challenges of airspace management, especially with the large scale usage of UAVs and drones. Air Marshal Chopra, please. Gentlemen, and thank you, Chair General A.K. Singh. Thanks to Clause General V.K. And uh, always a pleasure for an Air Force guy to be in an Army seminar. Clearly underscores the need for jointmanship, uh, which is one of the main parts of uh, today's uh, main domain operations. The primacy of aerospace power is, uh, in any conflict, is uh, more or less well established. In fact, the armies and the navies are wanting to invest much more in air power than their integral tanks, ships, submarines, uh, and aerospace. Thus, plays a great role in MDO. Slide number two, please. Uh, war is both timeless and ever-changing. While the basic nature of war is constant, the means and methods are evolving, uh, evolving continuously. The multi-domain operations has a clear origin stemming from the idea of uh, disruptive technologies and uh, will change the character of warfare even more as, we, uh, as they unfold in time to come. Uh, they are characterized by intense political, economical, informational and military activity and uh, may remain uh, be operating short of war. The makeup of the participants in the military conflict is also broadening. Slide number three, please. The aircraft satellites, ships, and ground vehicles all collect an abundance of information. Processing, analyzing, and using that amount of data is a challenge, especially when you factor in multi level security at which those systems operate. This, in a sense, uh, is the basis of uh, multi domain operations. Thus, uh, this relatively new uh, war fighting concept is also called the joint all domain operations by synchronizing major systems and crucial data sources with simplicity. MDO provides a complete picture of the battle space and empowers war fighters to quickly take decisions that drive actions. MDO also allows commanders to quickly predict adversary next moves and disrupt and overwhelm them and at a new and a very precise level. This requires interoperability solutions with the joint uh, full spectrum architecture using secure communications in a highly contested environment. It entails joint air do domain command and control and intelligence and surveillance and reconnaissance, as was mentioned by, by one of the earlier speakers. Uh, slide four, please. There is a need for combined physical and electromagnetic common operational picture. Artificial intelligence will be utilized to optimize ISR sensors, the collection. The system will give advice to the aircraft captain or a ground commander or a radar controller and even autonomously update the aircraft routes based on the threats. This will need high performance commuting computing and advanced software and hardware with embedded processing techniques to most efficiently scale up to hundreds of thousands of nodes. Now, multi-domain operations involve surface, marine surface, subsurface, air, space, missile forces, cyber, electro-optical, uh, uh, and various other uh, uh, agencies, uh, including the civilian governments. The joint war fighting concept will bring to bear all firepower, both kinetic and non kinetic, to help the military regain superiority in a contested, excess denied environment. MDO at tactical strategic levels and will require specific task forces. Now, Indo Pacific Command already has a multi domain task force, and I understand the United States. Uh, is going to soon have two more such task forces that can be deployed anywhere in the world. Slide five, please. MDO may be beyond the traditional air land or air sea battle. Each uh, domain, aerospace, has a huge role for each of them. 
the role and capabilities of aerospace power in the support of army and navy in terms of kinetic uh, effects through close air support introduction etc is all very well known to the audience so uh, we will move to uh, i'm going to look more at the role of aerospace in the multi domain operations uh, let us start uh, from the top the uh, space is ultimate vantage point number of satellites being used for c4i sr and increasing exponentially over 40% of the world's active satellites are in low earth orbit space is much beyond just connectivity and communications it is for surveillance battle assessment command and control navigation targeting synchronization in time and space space based lasers electronic warfare can impact air and surface operations we are looking at uh, uh, small satellites on hot standby like we scramble aeroplanes uh, you know the indian air force uh, all air forces do and be launched at in large numbers from a single launcher or even from an aircraft so space based operations have the advantage of ambiguity uh, because attribution may be difficult now ambiguity i think is a key to md operations uh, there is a saying that uninhabited satellites have no others so because of its great influence space is also becoming a battleground now targeting enemy c4isr will uh, affect their md operations there is a need to create uh, porcupines for the adversary by denying them use of multi domain uh, assets uh, in a coordinated manner also the damage assessment can be difficult in space now denial of access to vital satellites that are needed for isr uh, the communications early warning navigation could really affect the commander's planning decision making and execution cycle and could uh, render operations ineffective so there is a need to have kinetic and non kinetic anti satellite capabilities so space have degree of vulnerabilities now adversity can deliver effects of emp electromagnetic pulse through a multiple of non nuclear modes that produce a wide array of uh, outcomes ranging from temporary interference uh, to system destruction satellites are nearly impossible to hide I mean, they are visible to everybody they they move at, at uh, almost uh, predictable paths uh, that can't be changed easily and adversaries can employ a variety of attack options including kinetic strike uh, striking uh, their ground station jamming the satellite or spoofing the links or using directed energy uh, uh, to dazzle or partially blind the satellite uh, there are parasitic uh, micro satellites uh, that could latch onto a satellite and uh, disable it or alter its orbit or uh, hijack it or hijack the information from it so uh, like a few other powers india has already successfully demonstrated the asat um, and direct energy weapons and lasers are uh, gradually evolving and uh, it times to come uh, the, the, these are uh, capabilities that india will build uh, slide number 6 please on sensors and command and control such as aw and c aircraft maritime patrol aircraft and aerostats will help create the battle airspace they will also help uh, exercise control on both defensive and offensive assets in the air on ground and in the sea they could be uh, airborne platforms to help create uh, secure communications airborne synthetic uh, perceptor radar and long range uh, high accuracy cameras will support uh, creating the big picture how many fighters uh, uh, fighter aircraft like uh, have uh, sar uh, sar and electro optical sensors uh, which was also spoken by some other speakers earlier in the day slide 7 please now c130j hub is a special operations aircraft is has uh, if has significant aircraft capability for airborne operations and it's the c17 and il76 fleets the chinook and me 171 we give it significant uh, additional heliborne and special ops capability the apache would fly the airborne escort to uh, a heliborne force uh, air expeditionary task force capabilities have global reach Uh, they uh, provide inter and intra theater mobility and they support special operations uh, air insertions uh, they support uh, para operations and all these uh, air aspects i think are important for the multi domain operations slide number 8 please 
platforms cannot go deep into the territory, but also cannot only go deep into the territory, but also deliver effects from greater ranges. Other than weapons, air would be very effective to quickly deliver electronic warfare in the TBA and beyond. Uh, Rafal has the Spectra EW suit, the Su-30 MKI, the Mirage 2000, and all other fighters have electronic warfare suits. Many air arms, uh, uh, not the Indian Air Force, have dedicated EW aircraft. We used to also have it uh, some years back. In the famous uh, Bekta Ali operations, Israel had jammed all adversary radars to allow unhindered air strikes uh, 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 because uh, the systems were already jammed. Slide 9, please. Command and control nodes will be synthesized through artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence will help decide the most effective weapon systems uh, uh, that is available to a commander to choose from. Effective tools will use uh, pre-fed priorities of targets and that might have a precisely uh, be identified in advance. Now, imagine transferring data acquired by a Su-30 MKI or a Rafal which is passing through the technical battle area in an offensive mission going deeper, but giving on the way information to the Indian Army uh, to assess their own battle damage or plan their own fires. So this same would be true for many other sensors across the battlefield uh, and in the air, exchanging data and transferring data to a common grid. Now synthesizing data uh, and making it meaningful for the user will be very, very important. And I must tell you that AVACs would one day be required to support both the Army and Navy's battle. So therefore, we need more assets uh, uh, if you want real multi-domain operations. Now, unmanned is where the future is. Uh, Herons and searches have been flying in India for long. Sea Guardians are already flying with the Navy uh, on lease. More are going to come very soon. In Aero India two, uh, 2021, uh, uh, last month we all saw was full of indigenous uh, systems, including uh, wingman drones. Indian Army uh, uh, showcased the drone swarms in the Army Day Parade. And they will be used for all types of missions and UAV swarming, uh, manning unmanned uh, teams, uh, manned unmanned teams will all play a great role in the multi-domain operations. Slide number 11, please. Each service would uh, require an advanced battle management system connecting sensors management effectors. It would have to be survivable, distributed system of systems, uh, enable intro, intro ability between uh, dissimilar systems. Each service requires reliable, sustained, geospatial and electromagnetic uh, situational awareness on a real-time basis. Uh, it should be able to identify and track a number of real and covert uh, targets. Indian Air Force has got the AFNET, a secure uh, a domain, and more so uh, the Integrated Air Command and Control System, IACCS. Uh, which are powerful tools handling uh, 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 both for situational awareness and command and control. The same is true for the Army's uh, Kashtir and Navy's Trigun in their own uh, way. But all this has to be meshed for joint use, either directly or through cloud. The networks between the services have to talk. IHTCS uh, a good powerful tool, and I think it's a good model for the other services. Uh, uh, for all of us to port onto one uh, 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 kind of a model. Now, airspace uh, management in MDO will have uh, greater dynamics. To some extent, this is already being done. There are uh, uh, you know, procedural and cl close control uh, methods. Uh, with large number of UAPs coming in, the, uh, uh, this whole aspect will have to be further affected. Now, importance of connectivity cannot be underscored. But cyber has thus become a domain to protect and also to use for offensive action. The Indian government created CERT in uh, 2004, and in 2013, national cyber security policy was formulated. Each service created their own CERT teams. The Tri Service uh, Defense Cyber Agency was established now in September 2018. And they are tasked with the handling cyber security threats. Now, India clearly attaches seriousness to the cyber threats. The DCA works in coordination with the National Cyber Security Advisor, which is uh, overseen by the National uh, Security Advisor. Uh, next uh, slide, number 12, please. Now, PM Modi, who is driving the Digital India campaign for quick, transparent governance, cautioned that the clouds of uh, bloodless war are covering hovering over the world. Now, denial of service attacks to disrupt the economy, distract from the simultaneous military attack, 
uh, uh, it can cause a natural trauma. Clearly, the nation has become sensitive to cyber at the highest level of the government. Slide number 13, please. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, cyber, uh, as of January this year, that is 2020, uh, 4.57 billion people are connected on internet. That's nearly 60% uh, uh, of world's population. Uh, and uh, there are nearly 1 billion web hosts with over 25 billion pages. Now, larger the numbers of users, higher the risk. So multiple layers of security are needed to ensure system and data integrity. Cyber environment is characterized by interactions at the speed of light is much faster than the fastest jet or the fastest hypersonic weapon. So therefore, any action in cyberspace it, it can be faster and lead to far reaching the geographical effects than any other domain. And there has been a shift from sequential and concentrated operations to continuous and dispersed operations <laughs> conducted <laughs> confrontation and to remote data to the military operation. All militaries are hiring some warfare experts to defend critical networks and security of sensitive information. Now, specific to the aviation, support traditional warfare, uh, temper with the operation via cyber means in order to facilitate uh, an air attack. Now, cyber uh, space can also be used for espionage, propaganda, uh, psychological ops, uh, uh, electronic uh, eavesdropping, sabotaging military, C4I, SR, networks, etc. Can we conclude, please? Can we conclude? We uh, run the time. Okay. Yeah, okay. Last two slides. Multi-domain <laughs> operations architecture must operate a highly contested environment. Uh, slide 14, please. In the new CCN, I mean, the place of cyber directed energy, uh, uh, nanotechnology, robotics, biotechnology advancements in far beyond the normal capacity to predict their effectiveness. Numerous countries are working on highly powered uh, microwave uh, directed energy electromagnetic pulse weapons that could destroy electronic uh, systems. Now, cyber and electronic jamming targets would uh, increase ballistic, uh, include ballistic miles, uh, submarines, aircraft, as well as man packed systems. Militaries are also in in inexpensive low part jammers to inhibit the positioning, navigation, and timing necessities for the effective strike operations. On the other hand, advances in technology are proving ability to defend. Integrated air defense systems are becoming increasingly resilient uh, to electronics suppression and using passive sensor techniques such as infrared search and track. Now, these technologies are being augmented with surface and air-to-air -air missiles and that have advanced ranking and longer ranges. Slide 15, please. Uh, that's my second last slide. China's PLA has consolidated space and cyber under strategic support forces. Now, they have dedicated information warfare units to develop viruses and uh, hacker armies from the air operations. They have been targeting defense programs in USA, Russia, India. China has made huge investments in emerging technologies with higher focus on air and space. Now, China has developed a counter space strategy for anti excess area denial. Now, China plans uh, destroying, damaging, interfering with the enemy's ISRs. Uh, slide number 16, that's the last slide. And to summarize, surely uh, a lot uh, more needs to be done to tackle and deter two complicit neighbors, China and Pakistan, uh, from extreme forms of MDO and aggression. They will have to be a change of mindset and will require uh, appropriate funding. MDO has to be a joint exercise between the armed forces and the government agencies. And aerospace will remain the most important medium. Time to act is now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Marshal Chopra. We now have the other Chopra, who is also Anil. And he will take us through the maritime domain. And Anil, may I remind you? Sharing slide. Despite your preemption to say 20 minutes, it's actually 15 minutes.